Welcome to this video tutorial on how to render fire in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be creating a simple bonfire scene and we're going to start by creating our flame. To do that I'm going to be using Photoshop and I'm going to start by making a 2000 by 2000 pixel artboard like so. Within that we're just going to make a new layer, fill it black and then make another new layer on top of that. Then I'm going to select my pen tool here Make sure you're on path setting, and I'm simply going to draw a straight line from the top to the bottom around halfway in that artboard, like so. Once you've made that line, go to filter, render, and flame. And here we can create our flame using Photoshop. Now you see there's kind of lots of different settings within here. The one I found that works best with this is the multiple flames along path. And then we're just going to set the length a bit higher to something like 800. We're going to set the width a bit wider. Somewhere there. Lower down the interval. And essentially you're just kind of playing around with these settings until you get something that works well for your scene. Um, I'm going to set the quality up to high as well for this particular one. You'll find there's also some advanced settings in here where we can change the arrangement which is the sort of the random configuration of this flame and don't worry too much about the exact look because it's a fire it's going to be slightly random anyway. So once you're happy with the result we're just going to hit OK to generate the fire and once that's generated I'm then going to crop in my artboard to the size of that flame like so. Now we want to save out two versions of this to render. One is going to be the color of the fire and one is going to be an alpha map to help us cut the fire out. Now now we've made that flame we don't need our path anymore so you can go up to paths up in the top right, select your work path, right click and delete it once you've done that. So then going back to the layers I'm going to make a brand new layer, put it below my flame and I'm going to fill this in the sort of orange colour we've got on the edge of our fire here, like so. And you want it to sort of match that outer flame edge, just so it's roughly the same colour. And this is going to be our colour file. So once we've got that, we're just going to save this as a JPEG and we'll call this fire colour. Now we're going to make the opacity map. And to do that, we're going to turn back on our black background. We're going to create a black and white adjustment layer on top of the flame and then we're just going to take a new adjustment layer, create a levels and we're just going to pull in this white side to the left a bit just to make that white a bit brighter to help with the cutout of our flame. And once you've got that we're going to save that out, save it as a JPEG again and we'll call this one fire opacity. Like so. so now we have our two textures to use with our fire. So I'm going to now open my Rhino scene. Now in this scene I've just created a simple forest scene following along with the forest scene tutorial I've done in a previous video and I'll put a link for that tutorial in the description of this video. I've also made this a night scene by replacing the environment with a night HDRI and this is currently what the scene looks like. As you can see because it's a night scene it's very dark we can up the exposure of that to see, but you can see it's kind of a dark bluey tone. But I'm going to keep the exposure in the middle because what's going to brighten up the scene is our fire. So now we can create our fire. What I'm going to first do is we're simply just going to draw out a vertical plane around the size of my kind of pile of logs I've got here. This will be my fire essentially. And I'm going to move this into the middle of these logs like so. You can have a couple of these if you want a sort of layered fire, but for this I'm just going to do one for now. Once you've made your fire plane, I'm then going to open up the V-Ray Asset Editor. We're going to make a new material, and we're going to make a new emissive material here. And I'm going to call this Fire. With that made, we're going to open up the right hand channel. And under colour, we're going to click on the map setting here, click on bitmap, and then we're going to locate our fire 
texture under fire color and we're going to drop that color in there so that's the color of our flame then we're going to go to transparency we're going to go back to bitmap again and we're going to load in the fire opacity now unlike usual alpha maps actually to use this one we need to invert the opacity because if you load that straight in what you'll see is it's actually cutting out the fire we want and leaving the background so if i go to that map and we go to parameters go to color manipulation and click on invert texture to flip the black and the white there you'll then see that it cuts out the background and just leaves the flame which is what we want i'm now going to apply that fire to my selection there and what we'll now do is i'm going to load back up my view and we're going to do a test render of this particular view here so i'm just going to do a interactive render viewport now that's loaded up what you can see is our fire has come through but our scene is still really dark so we're getting this really good fire effect but unfortunately it's not really lighting up the scene and the reason for that is that sometimes when using these emissive materials they're just not bright enough to light the scene up we can up the intensity and i'm going to just put this up to an intensity of 10 to really brighten up that flame and what you sometimes get is the flame itself will look slightly burnt out it will almost be kind of too white in the center so to compensate for this and to lower the kind of intensity of that color we can go to the multipliers and we can just drop down this color multiplier what this would do is it will balance out the color while keeping the intensity at the height we need so we can still get those kind of orangey tones of the flame and it's just about fine tuning the balance there until we get a nice balance of that fire color there you might also need to sort of bring the fire down a little bit depending on how it sits in your objects and it's just a case of sort of tweaking it slightly and then having a look at the interactive render to see how that turns out so we've got the fire in roughly the right place now so we see the kind of render loading up there but the scene is still really dark and in order to build in that kind of nice orange glow into the scene we're going to have to use an additional light so what i'm going to do is we'll stop that render and i'm going to create in my lights tool up here we're going to create a sphere light and i'm just going to draw it out in the center here on top of my plane around the same just a bit sort of half the size of our fire plane and we're going to move it so it just floats above the logs there like so now in my v-ray settings that sphere plane will come up and we're going to set the color to a nice orangey red color like so somewhere around there it should do and under options we're going to set it to invisible so the sphere itself will disappear in the scene once we've done that, I'm going to go back to my view and we're going to load back up my interactive renderer to have a look and see what that looks like. Now you can see as this loads up, we're getting that really nice orange glow into our scene from that sphere light. So it's a balance of using that light and our fire texture to build that atmosphere up. And what we can do is we can play around with the intensity of this light to see how much glow we want to give to the scene and the higher I make that the more the glow will kind of apply to the surrounding environment too and here we get that nice orange color on the surrounding trees as well which is what I wanted to try and light this scene up so that was just a very quick tutorial on how to render fire and place it within a scene in V-Ray for Rhino I hope you found this video useful and if you want to watch any other videos on how to set up rendered environments and textures in Rhino and V-Ray, please watch the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.